Hi friends! In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create a structural column with a U-shaped cross-section, similar to the one shown on the screen. The U-shaped cross-section will be developed as a nested component using the 2D profile family template before loading it into the structural column family template, where I will create a fully parametric column to be used in the main project, like this one. Let's get started by opening a new profile family template. Here I will create the cross section and it's just a 2D drawing of the U-shaped profile shown earlier. To make it a parametric family or an intelligent family that can adapt its dimensions, appearance or behavior based on defined parameters, I would need to set it up, starting with the reference planes, which will serve as the framework constraining and supporting our geometry. Our profile is coming together with the reference planes aligning perfectly to form the U-shape. Alright, moving on to the next step, align the reference planes with the dimension lines. These dimension lines are essential for controlling the geometry and enabling parametric functionality, ensuring the family adjusts correctly when parameters are modified. Up next are the parameters, which will help us adjust the dimension lines when connected. That will give the end user the opportunity to change values for the family by changing the numerical values in the parameters. For this family, I'll only need parameters for height, width, radius and the thickness of the web and flange, all of which I'll set as type parameters. When working with nested components, I almost always use type parameters. Here's a handy tip. You can rearrange the order of the parameters using the small arrows. I usually place the parameters that are most likely to be adjusted at the top for easy access. Now I will link the parameters to our dimensions by selecting the dimension line, navigating to the top menu and choosing the relevant parameter from the label drop down menu option. Repeat this process for all dimensions. The last step in the process of creating this nested family component is the visible part, the actual geometry. Personally, when drawing up the 2D geometry, I prefer to position the lines adjacent to the reference planes rather than directly on top of them. This approach offers, I think, better control when aligning the geometry to the reference planes. Make sure when aligning to press the little lock making sure the reference plane and geometry are connected. Let's flex the model, meaning change the parameter values to check if everything works as intended. I would recommend doing it regularly when developing a complex family so you don't end up at the end with a highly advanced family that doesn't work. One thing I would like to add is a little bit of detailing. Smooth edged like the U-shaped steel column. I will start by drawing a circle with a radius matching the thickness and positioning it accordingly. Using the trim is extend tool, I'll create a smooth edge on the flange. However, this edge isn't parametric yet, so I'll select the curved line and add an annotation. This annotation represents the radius of the curved line, which I can link to a parameter for full parametric control. Since the radius of the curved line matches the thickness t, I can use the formula field for the radius parameter and set it equal to t. This way, any changes made to the thickness t will automatically update the radius to the same value. I continue to chamfer off or create a fillet arc or whatever this curved line is called by creating a circle with the same radius as the thickness, moving it slightly and using the trim extend tool to form a close loop for my profile. Make it an annotation and connect it to the radius parameter. Add one for the top by just copying the one I just created with the mirror tool. The geometry is complete. Let's tidy up by purging all unused objects and elements from this family. This will make the file lighter and improve performance. While it might not be critical for this family, it can make a noticeable difference in more complex families. For now, I will save the profile family with a logical name of my desktop for easy access. Next up, the creation of the column with the profile just created, start a new family and important here, select the structural column family template. 
since it comes equipped with some predefined parameters and built-in functions that we'll explore. We'll delete the reference planes already created here, as well as some of the parameters. To create this column family, I'll be using the sweep tool. The sweep command is a modeling tool that generates 3D geometry by sweeping a 2D profile along a defined path. In this case, I'll use the 2D profile I've already created. First, I'll sketch the path. I'll align the top edge of this path to the upper built-in reference plane called the upper ref level and align the bottom edge to the lower ref level. It's crucial to use these reference planes because they correspond to the connection points in the main Revit project. The next step is to define the 2D profile that will be swept along the path. While I could sketch the profile manually in the view, I've already created the 2D profile and loaded it into this family. I'll simply select the preloaded profile from the drop-down menu and click the green check mark. And that's it. Our column is now created with the desired U-shaped 2D profile. Go to the plan, view and align the column to the center line by aligning and locking it. Connect the built-in material parameter to the column by selecting the column going to the properties menu and pressing the tiny little button that says associate parameter. All right, I have already set up my parameters, but only in the nested family. I need to do it one more time in the hosted family, the structural column family, if I want the end user in the Revit main project to get access to them. So go ahead and create the same parameters, which are height, width and thickness T and S. I then enter specific numerical values that correspond to the real world dimensions of the U-shaped column. Inputting these values is essential. Without them, the parameters won't properly connect to the nested family. Then I go to the project browser and locate the nested 2D profile, right click and select type properties. The parameters displayed here are the parameters for the nested family. I will connect them to the parameters in the host family. Back in the plan view where I will move the column to the center where the two reference planes meet. The center here is the origo when placing the column in the main Revit project. Do a quick flexing of the height parameter. Nice. Save the column on the desktop and load it into the main Revit project. I will place the column inside the engineer bear headquarters. Since the material parameters are connected, I can change the material, which I will do. Find appropriate material in the material browser and change the view type to realistic. Looks really good. I'm now standing in a section view where I can see the top and bottom connection points. In the properties menu, you'll notice the built-in structural column parameters base level and top level. These parameters are only available because I chose the structural column family template. The base level corresponds to the lower reference level in the column family template, while the top level corresponds to the upper reference level. This is why, as I mentioned earlier, it's crucial to connect the column, in this case, the sweep to both the top and bottom reference levels to ensure the column family functions properly. Additionally, it's worth noting that you can easily offset the column from both the base and top levels to meet your specific project needs. That will be all for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.